بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Indeed our praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, sustainer and controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The one thing we know that is inevitable in existence is death. Even uh, growing old is not inevitable because many people die before reaching old age. But what is inevitable is death. We all have to die. But when we hear of the, the death of a brother or a sister, in as much as, well, if you're related to the individual or you have some sort of friendship with that person, you will feel sad. You may even grieve for a while. But the reality is life has to move on. But it should move on with us learning something from the death of our brother or sister. And that is, one day death itself will come to one of us, or each one of us. But when that time comes, whatever we have managed to do, that's all we will benefit from. All the things we had planned to do will not be of any benefit anymore. Thus, we should strive to do as much as we can now while we're alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and here he paints a very vivid reality that most people live. Although we know death is inevitable, often we still live mindless or, or unmindful of death. Allah says in Surah Qaf, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ and the agony of death will bring with it the truth or the reality. What is this reality? The reality that we now have to face the life in the grave. We now have to face the hereafter. And then Allah tells us in the same verse, He said, That is what you were fleeing from all this time. Fleeing from this reality of having to face that existence in the grave, and then the judgment, and then the hereafter. But running from reality doesn't change it. Turning a blind eye to reality doesn't change it. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appealed to our intellect in the Quran to pay attention to these realities, to think about them. Because denying them, turning away from them, Creating a delusion or illusion will not change reality. We will have to die. We will all have to face either torment or bliss in the grave. Depending on how we lived in this world. We will all have to face the judgment. The world of disbelief will not change that. In fact, no matter how much we desire to change it, we can't. Because the reality, or these realities, were decreed by Allah, the Creator, and only He can change them. So, we need to learn from these realities. We, these realities need must, must shape our lives, must shape the direction our lives take. So, death will bring this reality. But Allah says the reality that most of us live is, that is what we were fleeing from all our lives. So we should not let the death of someone make us sad for a few days, and then we forget that person or the death of that person. I mean, we're not required to every day remember the person and mention their name. But at the least, we ought to learn from the death of an individual that my turn will come. At least we, I still have some time to prepare, to do some things. The person who has died has no more chance, subhanAllah. 
The Prophet السلام, said, when a person dies, إِذَا مَاتَ ابْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ إِحْدَى ثلاث. When a human being dies, his or her actions are severed except from one of three things. Meaning, the opportunity to increase your good, these opportunities come to an end. You can't do anything else. Except from one of three things. The first one he said, alayhi salam, sadaqatun jariyah, perpetual charity. That is charity. The word jariyah used in this hadith means it continues to benefit. Charity that continues to benefit. So some charitable work a person did or contributed to, that mashallah benefits people for many generations. Like you may help to build a school, a masjid. People pray in the masjid five times a day for many, many years. A school where our children and young people are educated, they're enlightened, they're nurtured. Taking a well somewhere, building a road. Any act of charity that continues to benefit. The person after death will continue to benefit from these charities. The second thing is ilmun yuntafa'u bihi, knowledge that is beneficial. So you teach someone something and that person is a better person for that knowledge. Every time the person practices what you teach them, the teacher gets a reward. And then that person may teach others now. And then the others one day may teach others. So you can begin to see the chain reaction. The original teacher or all the teachers in the chain will benefit. And the third thing he said, alayhi salam, waladun salihun yad'ulah. Righteous children who pray for him or her. Righteous children. Because parents play a very important role in the upbringing of their children. In fact, the most important role in the upbringing of their children. Later on in life, of course, people can be influenced by other things. But generally, what a child becomes when he or she grows up has a lot to do with the kind of nurturing and educating that that child received from his or her parents. In other words, righteous children don't just happen to be righteous. They have to be nurtured. Because it is only the righteous child who will remember his or her parents on a regular basis and raise their hands and ask Allah to, to forgive them and, and to bless them and so on. But if you look at these three things, brothers, you will see that these are all efforts that the human being who died started while he or she was alive. And this is what Allah, this is the, this is the meaning of the statement of Allah in Surah Al-Najm, وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى Allah says, and the human being will have nothing more than that which he strives for. You're not going to have anything more. The things you strive for. So the pious children are things you used to do before you die. Educating and teaching and spending time with the kids. The education that you teach someone, the knowledge that you share with someone that will benefit that person and others. The sadaqah, the charity that you give, these are all things you would have started in your own life while you were alive. And Allah says, the human being will have nothing more than, what, than, which, than that which he strives for. And that his strivings, he will soon see. That's what you will see. Nothing more, nothing less. So, the bottom line is, brothers and sisters, it is what you and I do that really matters. This is what will make the difference. We should never reach a stage where... We think that, you know, when I die, my family will make dua, my community will make dua, and I'm okay, I'll be forgiven. Yes, as relatives, as, as, as a community, as brothers and sisters in Islam, we have an obligation to pray for each other and make dua. But again, we don't know how much these duas, how much difference they will make. But the primary thing is that the person has to strive for himself or herself. The point is nobody can live anyhow 
and then expect that people will make dua and suddenly now Allah will forgive everything and the person will just go to paradise. It doesn't work that way. Because Allah will judge us based on the deeds we perform. Intercession is allowed, but even the intercession will be allowed because Allah made it clear in the Quran that for intercession to be hap to happen, first of all, Allah has to be pleased or He has to allow the, the intercessor to intercede. So not anybody who says, I want to intercede, O Lord, will, will get permission. And then number two, Allah has to allow the person on whose behalf you want to intercede for, He has to allow intercession for that person. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the Prophet alayhi salam to intercede for the Muslim ummah, not everybody he will be allowed to intercede for. Simply because the person said, I'm Muslim. Allah has to be pleased with the person on whose behalf the Prophet wants to intercede for. Because we know in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said in a hadith, in this hadith, he said that on the day of judgment, he will be at the Haud, his, his, his fountain, right? Known as al kawtha in Jannah. And he's happy to welcome the Muslims to come and drink from this, uh, from this fountain. And some people will be turned away. As they come close, angels will turn them away. And the Prophet ﷺ will say to, to, to the angels, to say to Allah, these are people from my ummah, why are they being turned away? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, you don't know the deviation or the innovations they invented after you. So intercession can only happen if Allah is pleased with the intercessor and the one for whom that person wants to intercede. But this, Allah will not be pleased for that person unless of course the person lived a certain lifestyle. So at the end of it all, it comes back down to what did the individual do while he or she was alive. That's really the crucial thing. And so perhaps the most important lesson we can all learn from our brothers and sisters, you know, friends who pass away, is that not only our turn will come one day, but that the life we have left is an opportunity for us to strive, to do something, something extra, that when death comes, we'll have no regrets. When death comes, we won't have a long list of unfinished things we didn't get to do yet. <coughs> but at least we will be prepared and be, and, and be satisfied that we have done most, if not all of the things that we wanted to do. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He make that time of death easy for all of us. And may He help us to use the life we have and the energy we have and the health we have to worship Him even more, to do more good things, so that when death comes, when it is our turn to go to depart this world, we would have made good use of this lifespan that we have in order to make a difference in our outcomes in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to live uh, to, by, by this message He has revealed. Because in living by this message, therein lies our salvation and our opportunity to escape the hellfire and to be admitted to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm in the straight path. May He keep our hearts firm on His religion. And may He turn our hearts in the direction of obedience to Him. And may He protect us from the whisperings and from the temptations of shaitan.